today? Can we just, it's like taking the day off. But all I have to do is talk about multiple other techniques of determining convergence or divergence of series. Maybe I'll justify them. Maybe I'll go back and talk about errors with the integral test. But for the most part, you guys, I'm pretty light today. I'm just going back to some uh, additional tests for convergence and divergence and playing with them, nothing more. So, I got a whole new test. Now, this test is kind of limited in that it only works for alternating series. When I talk about alternating series, I'm talking about a series like this or this. Can I just pick one real quick? Um, like, for example, um, this one. When I take a peek at a series of this form right here, are you guys okay with that? Do I have to blow it up? Blow it up? I know I can. Then let me take it a big peek at a series like this. And let's be careful about what it really looks like when I expand it out. I think my very first term is nothing more than, um, um, you tell me. Well, you mean a sub 1, though. I can't hear you. Oh, there you go. Plus a sub 3. You guys get it? In other words, it's a series where each and every term is changing signs. By the way, I'm be careful with my words. Each and every term is changing signs. That's an alternating series. I maintain that if both these conditions are met, namely that a sub one has its own, excuse me, a sub n is greater than or equal to a sub n plus one. In other words, the sequence of the positive components is actually decreasing. And if the limit of a sub n, that's of course the positive component of the is going to zero as n increases up bound, then the series converges. I mean, the verification really isn't that bad. If I were to take a peek at the nth term of the sequence of partial sums, it would look like this. Oh, sorry. It's, it's um, yeah, I'll put plus. I don't know if it's plus or minus, but whatever the case is. Actually, can I rewrite that, you guys? Can I rewrite that? This one. And let me come back down, come down to the very last term, which I'm going to rewrite as some, I don't know, an a sub 2n minus 1 minus an a sub 2n. And if you guys don't mind, I'm going to give this an alternative name. I'm going to call this s sub 2n. So I think s sub 2 is equal to this. I think s sub 4 is equal to this. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So do you guys think this might be interpreted as the nth term of the sequence of partial sums? Yes. Yeah, I would agree. Yes. Um, did you make an S of 2 on because they're grouping them together? It's or? exactly why I did that. Okay. Secondly, would you guys not agree that this term is positive as well as this one? As well as the next one for S of 6, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're all positive. And so I think with the sequence of partial sums of these pieces right here, I think um, it's monotonic. However, I also maintain that I can think of S sub 2n this way. All the way down to the very last term, which is going to be, um, um, is that an A sub just my pot, my minus a sub 2n, my very last term. Yes? Um, two questions. Yes. Why did it, if you're moving the parentheses, why did it switch to negative positive? Just go backwards. I mean, if I were to try to remove these parentheses right here, wouldn't I distribute the negative sign in? Okay. That's the negative. Oh, it is. That's positive. Oh, it is. And then, uh, before you erased it, you had the grouping and you said, uh, in the parentheses, how do we know it's positive without knowing a? You mean over here? Yeah. Because I was grouping by twos. That's how I know it's positive. So when I group two at a time, 
since a sub 1 is bigger than a sub 2 from that relationship with the assumption, I know it's going to be positive. That's going to be positive. That's going to be positive. That's why I'm saying n sub 2 n is the nth term of a sequence of uh, partial sums that's actually uh, increasing. It's monotonic. But I maintain what you see inside the parentheses here is positive. What's in here is positive. Every one of these is positive is being subtracted off, even though it's a single term. That being the case, I think my S of n, my S of 2 n, excuse me, is bounded above by nothing more than my A sub 1. I said bounded above. That being the case, I guess I've got this sequence that's not only monotonic, but it's um, bounded, therefore by the monotonicity bounded here. For sequences, I think the sequence of partial sums is going to be conversion. And I think it's conversion to whatever the sum is. And you can say, yeah, but you forgot all the negative terms. You're right. But with the negative terms, I can regroup and come with exactly the same limit for the in terms of the sequence. Can you explain again why a sub 3 repeats? Why a sub 3 repeats? Yeah. No, I can't explain that. I can't explain it at all. Sorry. I was just regrouping. I can't count. My apologies. So everybody, briefly, briefly justify why the alternating series test holds. Excuse it. And in using it, you guys mind if I flip around these pages? I'm just cheating. I don't want to stand in class and waste our time by trying to conjure up some examples off the top of my head. So I made sure I typed some. It's the same page you guys started last time in class. Let's take a peek at these examples. Oh, no, I don't want to take a peek. Hold it. Hold that thought. Do this instead. What kind of series is this? Is that an alternating series or not? It's a sequence. It's a Good, it's neither. It's not even a, a series, it's a sequence. I'm going to call it the harmonic sequence. Does it converge? No. Diverges. Diverges. I can't hear you. Diver. Diverge. I think converges. I think converges because a sequence, all that's required to converge is the limit of the goes to some fixed real number. And it does, doesn't it? So I think the harmonic sequence converges. Um, what can you say about this sequence? It's not a sequence. It's not a sequence. It's a series. 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 And it's the harmonic series. Does it converge? No, no. no, it doesn't. What's the easiest way to verify that? Jeepers. P it's a P series with P being the one, which is not strictly greater than one. Therefore, it's a P series that diverges. Now, you take a peek at my first example. And range of one on up, of negative one to the, I don't know how to type to you guys, I don't make glasses on the plane. Negative one to the n. It doesn't matter, n plus one, n, n minus one. It changes to the size, but it's still hard, but it's still an alternate series. So everybody, humor me. Clumsy hands. The a sub n, is that decreasing as a sequence? Definitely, yes. Uh, is the limit going to go to zero? Yeah. Yes, therefore, by the alternating series test, I think the alternating harmonic series converges. Let me say all that over again fast. Harmonic sequence converges, harmonic series diverges, but the alternating harmonic series converges by the alternating series test. Let's see my next example. Yes? So there was no because there. So we know that the sequence, the harmonic sequence converges. We know that the um, series, harmonic series, diverges, therefore it converges. That, so if, if the sequence converges, the actual uh, alternating series converges as well? If you're careful by choice of words, I was using my hand. I was saying, since as a sequence, that nth term, or this particular sequence, is decreasing. Yes. In other words, a sub n plus 1 is. Um, in this case with the only series test is well just the n plus plus term. How does it compare to the nth term? Is it less than equal to? And since the limit is going to be equal to zero, then by the alternating series test, this particular series converges. Okay. Make sense? No. Nope. <laughs> then, then, then don't get hung up on what sequence. I can say, oh look at the sequence of those pieces. It's uh, decreasing. Forget about my language. Just say it to yourself, well, this particular thing is decreasing. And it's decreasing because it's going back and forth 
It's actually honing no, in. No, that's why I use my hands. Oh. There's no back and forth. I'm just okay. talking about the ace of N here. Okay. Just the one over N. Again, David, go back to this real quick. Come back and have a page. This is too important. Come back and have a page. Notice how with the alternating series test, this ace of N thing I'm talking about is just a non-negative component of what's in there. And so if you don't mean to use my word sequence, don't listen to me. I'm just saying a sub n is greater than equal to a sub n plus 1. In that case, after all, when you look at a sub n, it's this. Question, trivially, is this true? Yes. Yeah, I think trivial is true because these two denominators are the same. <sighs> this denominator is bigger than that one, so this fraction is smaller than that one. I think it is the case here that my a sub n is at least as big as my a sub n plus 1. So I verify the first conditions by math. I don't want to verify the second condition if you don't mind, because we cheated. We already did when we looked at the harmonic sequence. Well, clearly that n's term goes to zero. Verify it completely by the alternating series test by a series convergence. Yes? Can you define what a convergent to? No. But with an alternating series test, oh, excuse me, I missed both. With an alternating series, if the series converges, then I can proclaim that it is accurate to the first unused term. So if you use the first five terms, that first five terms uh, approximates the actual value of the infinite series as close to the first unused term in absolute values. Actually, you can see that with my argument up here just by stopping at one of these particular values. Um, I thought I read Let's get down to the really nitty-gritty here on this. How am I doing so far? Badly. I'm doing very badly. It's an infinite series. I don't stop here. Whatever it is, I just keep going. You see my point? Ah, but if I take a peek at S of 1, I'm going to define a whole new sequence for you. Out of thin air. I'll let S of 1 be uh, A sub 1. I'll let S of 2 be um, A sub 1 plus A sub 2. I'll let S sub 3 be uh, the sum of the first three terms of this infinite series. And by the way, you guys, I'll go all the way down to, uh, how about S of n, which is nothing more than A1 plus A2. Oh, stop. At A sub n, no tricks. I really stop there. Now, I think what I just created for you on this ink board is a whole new sequence. S1 comma, not plus comma, S2 comma, or the Sn. Now, my working definition of the convergence of an infinite series is this. I proclaim an infinite series converges if the sequence of partial sums converges. That's a really cool definition because it brings up the notion of convergence for an infinite series to the simple notion of the convergence of a sequence. Meaning, meaning, if the sequence converges, or the sequence of partial sums, as long as the limit of the nth term of the sequence, excuse me, <coughs> sequence of partial sums, advised to some fixed positive real number, and, and, if that is true, that this number S is actually the infinite sum as well. And that's why it's a cool definition. It brings back this limiting value to the actual sum of the infinite series. David? Uh, you mentioned, uh, when you went back to that, the, the first unused term. Do you mean as in, um, kind of like we did in uh, telescoping series, to where you go up to the, the first use, uh, cross out the whole uh, parenthesis, and those are I the just, first three that I understand use. why you're using your words. I just think that's a completely different notion. Because when it came to going up to a certain point with the telescoping series, that simply allowed me to uh, evaluate the limit of S sub n. But it had nothing to do with how accurate that value for the limit of uh, It didn't tell me anything about how accurate that value for S sub n was relative to the actual S value, which is a sum. So I think what you did with telescoping series didn't even necessarily do with the accuracy of looking at the nth partial sum of the infinite series to approximate the infinite series. 
I think you, only, you and I only played around with the notion of telescoping this just so we can evaluate what the limit estimate was. But it also tells you whether it uh, converges. Well, it tells you it converge and what you converge to. I got the exact value there. It, wasn't, it had nothing to do with approximations. But here you're saying the first unused term because you're using some and not the other. And it's an alternating series. Well, let me give you an example. To come back over here to that particular alternating harmonic series. Would you guys agree? However, I wrote it. If I took a peek at this particular sum, wouldn't that give me this? Stop. I want a yes or no. Do you think that this particular sum right here approximates the sum? Crudely, maybe just approximates yes. somehow. Yeah, somehow, but how, how good is this approximation? Well, this number right here, whatever it is, 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 is pretty close to this and is no further off than the value of the first unused term, which is the absolute value of negative one six, which is just one six. That number right there isn't upper bound for the error in using S of five to approximate this. That's all I'm saying, David. How far off are these? By no more than one six of the unit. Now that's pretty slick. That's what the beauty behind all the series, I think. It's because you really, without any computations, immediately get the number bound for the error and use the nth term of the sequence of partial sums to determine the value of s, which is the value of the infinite sequence. That's pretty slick stuff. I'm not doing very well getting through my list, am I? Um, back to my examples. I got an idea. Um, in 20 minutes, let's see if I can get my second example. Ay, 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 you guys. Um, 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 um. What do you think? What's A sub M? With, with an alternating series, I got it off the board already, but with my alternating series, what's A sub M? Side of n is n increases with that bound, n ranging over the positive integers. Do you think it oscillates back and forth more than any of them? Yes. See, I disagree. I disagree because the sine of one radian is about the sine of what, 57 degrees? But the sine of two radians is a uh, hundred, I don't know, uh, a little less than 120 degrees. And then I think it's not necessarily the case that I'm going to increment by, by one and negative one for every increase in n over the set of positive integers. I, I put this example in here to shake you guys up. It's not an alternating series. Because I'm not necessarily alternating signs for each and every pair of entries of the terms of a series. Your sign will still work for n eventually. It, well, no, I, I, no actually, as n increases that bound, I, there's always going to be pairs here and there that don't actually alternate with the a sub n's. And so it's definitely not even eventually going to be an alternating series. And so my bottom line is, I cannot use the alternating series test. However, I do maintain, you guys, if you've got a series like this, if this corresponding series converges, if it does, that one's going to converge. So can I cheat? And by the way, you need to know this, so, so write it down. Got a series, don't know if it converges, but if you consider the corresponding series only positive numbers, and it converges, well, jeepers, yours is going to converge as well, because that's some of your signs are going to change. Yes, this is too important. You got a series you don't know if it converges. If you give up and see, look at look at the corresponding series where you only look at the series of the positive absolute values of these terms, and that series converges, well then jeepers, yours is going to converge as well. Think about it. It's necessarily got to be true. If this one converges, then oh, you throw in a couple negative signs in front of some of those terms. Certainly, that's going to converge. 
So, in my example, number 16, let's just um, let's give up. Let's not answer the question. It's too difficult. Let's take a peek at the series instead. Could you use the integral test to answer that one? I don't know. I didn't think of that. Can you? Like, Ooh, it's not definitely that... Definitely not. Bad. Definitely not. Because I have to see whether I anti-differentiate or differentiate this oscillates back and forth sines and cosines. Oh, okay. And uh, unfortunately, this thing right here, you're never going to get it. You're never going to get it to go away because it's downstairs. It's not like this is being multiplied by then some positive times negative. Because I can't get rid of those. What is differentiation or anti differentiation? Okay. Unfortunately. So you guys, let's check out this series right here, and let's take a peek at the term. That's the nth term of AM. That's the nth term of AM. P series. P series with P being equal to 2, which is bigger than 1, which converges. <coughs> Therefore, this series, I should say that series, sorry. This series converges by the, by the comparison, comparison test. test. <laughs> and if this the, my, that series converges by the comparison test, then certainly this series converges as well. Yes. Uh, what is this test called? Or is this a special? How about if you just write the theorem? If the, a series involving the absolute value of your terms converges, then your series is going to converge as well. Because I feel like that would be easier to test for the alternating series test pretty much any other test. Because this only works with alternating series, correct? I think that's dangerous. Here's why. Because I think with the alternating harmonic series, if you just look at the absolute value of these terms, it's Can anybody panic and say something about the next example? Uh, before, before you do that, just how would a yes or no answer? Alternating series? Yes or no? Clearly yes. Clearly yes. Look, look, clumsy hands. For values of n, one or above, that's always positive. And there's my sign change. There's my toggle switch for every increase in n. However, in using the alternating series test to determine whether this converges or diverges, I mean, do you guys think this thing is continually decreasing? <laughs> you don't want to talk. Yes, yes. Yeah. Do you think the limit of the thing is going to go to zero? All right, let me ask you a different question. Take the limit inside the circles and increase that bound. Is that an infinity over infinity situation, yes or no? No. No, I don't think it is. I think when you take the limit of the a sub n as n increases that bound, I think you're getting the numerous going to pi halves over denominators going to infinity. Clearly the limit of the nth term, clearly the limit of a sub n, I should say, is zero. equal to zero. So clearly by the alternating series test, this series converges. converges. If you're nervous about me proclaiming that this thing right here is strictly decreasing, you should check it. You should come in and say, let's consider the nth term.
And think of this the evaluation of function evaluated and where the where the domains restricted to the, the positive integers. If you look at the corresponding continuous function, and we differentiate. Oh, that's not bad, is it? My denominator times the derivative of my numerator. Minus my numerator times the derivative of my denominator. All over my denominator squared. I get a tad bit of cancellation. And I'm merely left with a 1 minus 2x inverse tangent of x all over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Well, my denominator gives no critical numbers. Let's find the critical number of my numerator. <coughs> Let's set my first derivative function equal to 0 generating this particular equation. Oh, no, you guys, I can't. No, I'm serious, I can't. Here's an equation I can't solve for x. The way we could just talk. If x is equal to negative 7, then this term is going to, this factor is going to be negative 14. Irrelevant. Because it corresponds to a series. I know that's going to be one. 1 or bigger. Oh, okay, I'm being silly. Let's come back again. If x is equal to 1, here's a 2. Here's a, here's a. Um, <coughs> but what is the. Thank you, pi over 4. <laughs> so I think 2 over pi over 4 is pi x. Pi is like 3. So 3 over 2 is negative. 1 minus negative is, oh, it's negative. I guess I'm decreasing. And if x is anything bigger than, than um, 1, like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I think clearly this is growing big. But that's just some constant. It's not some constant, but it's insignificant. And I think clearly everything's going to be negative upstairs, just by observation. So I, I do think for values of x and b, 1 and beyond, I think I'm fairly safe in suggesting yeah, maybe the derivative function is negative throughout, which means the original function is decreasing. You can always look at the second derivative function. Maybe not the greatest of examples in the sense that I didn't analytically solve for x, but at least I looked at the derivative function and realized from one on up, yeah, it's going to be negative. I'm happy. Yes or no? Alternate? The answer is definitely yes. I mean, look in here, you guys. n plus 1 is bigger than n. So I think the difference is always positive. Here's my a sub m right here. And there's my toggle switch. I think clearly this is an alternating series. Um, what can you say about the limit of a sub n? And is it decreasing? Oh, you guys, this example I think is so unclear. I think I finally got to a pretty decent example. I need to worry about things. So for me to use the alternating series test, can we take a break? Can I talk about those two criteria, see if they're actually being met? Can you call back the 17 real quick? Yes. And did you say it converges on solidly? You know, to be honest with you, all we really did when we talked about the term of the series involving the absolute values. And I confess, we can just talk about that one. So I can come proclaim something about the alternating series, which is like this one here. I never looked at this one. So I think with the work I've done, I never addressed the question whether or not this particular series converges. Um, do you think it does? Why? Because the one over n squared. Beautiful. Because I think we can compare it to one over n squared plus one. So can I rephrase that? I think we can compare it to two over n squared plus one. But now when you pull two out, that can I agree. That's what I'm saying, thanks. What's that? Why do you um, Well, let's look at this. Whole new question. Does this piece converge? Let's compare it. Are you happy? Are you happy? See, I'm not happy. I think the inverse tangent of n is not necessarily always um, less than equal to 1, because the inverse tangent of n could be as big as or arbitrarily close to pi halves. But I think this is true. I think this is true. I think this is true. 
But now, since this is the nth term of a P series that converges, multiply by 2 isn't going to change the convergence. That's what I'm saying. A small scale change or a finite scale change, maybe a big one, but finite scale change doesn't affect the convergence here. You guys, I'm worried about 18. There's a bit of work here. But you didn't answer the question. Uh, yes. Does it converge absolutely? I can only now because I did the work on the middle board. Now that I show both this particular series and this one converge, then yes, now I can proclaim that I converge absolutely. But my point was, Linda, I had to go through the work in the middle board. I couldn't say for free for, with the work I did over here. You guys, do you agree 18 is uh, all time series? Let's check the two criteria. Let's you and I take a peek at the limit as n plays its game of this difference. You guys, am I writing it down correctly? I don't know. How would you compute that limit? I ask. I don't know. How would you compute that limit? Divide by. Divide by what? Well, you, you, you can't you know, change the values to x. But you could. Is that you can change something? We're all math deep, math 30 graphics. Every single look at conjugates. Let's you and I dive in here and multiply by a funky looking form of one. Let's multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of this. Downstairs, I think I'm, I'm left with this. What am I left with upstairs? Uh, n plus one minus n. So just one. So just one, yeah. Answer the question. Uh, Clearly zero. zero. Well, I guess my first criteria is being met. Second criteria is is the beast decreasing? Well, how am I going to determine if the sequence of a sub n is decreasing? What's that? So if you want me to differentiate, and I'm going to go ahead and let f of x be equal to the difference in these two beasts, and you said you want me to differentiate, but if I differentiate, I get this mess, which gives me this mess. And to find the critical numbers, I look for the zeros downstairs. Don't do it. Zero. Maybe negative one, but that's not defined at negative. Who cares? But I don't care about x being at the zero. I'm worried about values of n, one or bigger. So I guess i got to look at critical numbers from the numerator. And I think my first derivative function is equal to zero simply when the square root of x minus root x plus 1 is equal to zero, or when root x is equal to root x plus 1. Is it OK that I talk this fast? at the square both sides. But that means 0 is equal to negative 1. Oh, shoot, what just happened? Darn it, what happened? Broke math. Yeah, I did. Because logically speaking, I wrote this down in the import by making an assumption there's solutions. And I came with a logical contradiction. 0 is never equal to negative 1 for any value of x. Therefore, my original assumption that there are solutions here is wrong. Which means my first derivative function is always positive or always negative. And to figure out which one it is, I don't know, just pick a number out of thin air, uh, uh, um, one. Plugging one in for x here and here, doesn't that give me a negative value? It just means the original function is strictly decreasing. Even though I yield to no critical numbers, I can still answer the question of whether I'm increasing or decreasing. So now that both criteria for the alternate series test are being met, I would proclaim, therefore, my series converges by the alternating series test. Are you there? Uh, do you have to say anything else besides that? No, well, yeah. You have to say all this work. <laughs> Show the first two criteria in that. Yes, you guys, I know, I, I know I'm trying to beat that clock, but I don't like my examples. Through the short work. Unless it's obvious, yes, unless it's obvious. You guys, it just occurred to me. Can, can, I, can I make up an example out of thin air, 18.5? It occurred to me that maybe, maybe I should be addressing some other subtle issue you might not be seeing here. I just brought back on the screen the alternate series test. It's clearly written. 
nothing's, um, nothing's mistyped. What can you say about the civil revolution? I misspoke, sorry. I meant to say, when it comes to the limit of my a sub n, it's not equal to zero. So what does the alternating series test tell you? Thank you. That's the key. Notice how the alternating series has a punchline which says, oh, you converge. But if these criteria, if one of the criteria is not being met, I think the alternating series test is completely inconclusive. It says nothing. So do you still think you can answer my question? Is that converge or not? The answer is yes, you can, you can answer with the skills you have. What is the answer? Well, what do you think you say? Think about the limit. Is that increases that down to this piece? exists as a finite fixed real number. Not because it went to infinity, not because it went to negative infinity, it's just this limit did not exist as a finite fixed real number. Because I oscillate back and forth between two numbers that are getting, each one getting closer and closer to one and negative one. Did you guys see that? But did you see the subtlety of the answer? I could not exploit the alternate series test to proclaim I diverge. I had to resort back to the test for divergence. I don't understand that though, because if it doesn't go to zero, See, I think you should say the answer to why because it's a test for divergence. Because the limit of the term did not go to some fixed finite real number. Or, excuse me, in this case, maybe zero. All right, ratio test. I've got a whole new one for you. When you guys take a peek at this ratio test, um, can I say, can I close the board the series? Yes. You guys, can I try not to justify this? Um, I'll just fight in words, if that's okay. Given a series, like that, if you take the limit of the ratio of the n plus first term to its predecessor, if that equals some number strictly less than 1, then I'm going to say my series converges, and it converges absolutely. Now, the reason why this works so well 